Hi scholars, let's look at Teague 4.6b. I can identify and draw one or more lines of symmetry if they exist for a two-dimensional figure. So I'm going to be using patty paper or tracing paper, a marker, and my marker board to explain this. So let's get started. So before I begin, let's go over the definition of symmetry. Symmetry is putting a line down the middle of a two-dimensional figure and it is the exact same on both sides. Basically meaning it's congruent. Congruent means same size, same shape. So like, um, <clears throat> if I have this, I can cut it down the middle here or here that line has to cross in that central point of that object, okay? So, if I do this, this is not considered a line of symmetry because it's not down the middle. So, like, if I did this, let me show another example, like really low, that would not count as a line of symmetry either. So like if you have questions and answer choices where like they say which of the following shows correct line of symmetry, <clears throat> you know, if they cut it here or like here down low, just pretend that's really low, you know, this wouldn't even matter because that's not cut down the middle. And this wouldn't be correct because, you know, if it was cut down, you know, I'm, I tried to make it lower, but... <clears throat> It would, um, so this wouldn't work either. Or if they said which one the following shows the correct total, all the lines of symmetry. Well, let's say, let's say that's right down the middle this way. If you do this, that may be a line of symmetry, but there's also a line of symmetry this way. So that wouldn't work either. So then, you know, A would be your correct answer. So now I'm going to show you using patty paper, a marker, and a, trace, a marker board um, different lines of symmetry. So let's look at this object. This is a four-sided four object. It's a quadrilateral. It's a square. It can be considered a rhombus. It can be considered a parallelogram. So what I did was I took my tracing paper and I just traced that object. Now obviously like on assignments you can do this you know, as part of the activity, but on a test or a state test or things, you know, you won't have that luxury of having tracing paper, but the tracing paper helps you understand symmetry. So what I do is I tell my students, I want you to fold it and see if they both line up with each other. So I'm going to fold it right down the middle. And do you notice like nothing sticking out? They both lined up perfectly on both sides. Okay. So this down the middle would be considered a line of symmetry. So then I'm gonna just kinda take my marker and just very lightly I drew some dots. Now we're gonna trace it this way, or I'm sorry, fold it this way, down the middle. Notice nothing is overlapping. Okay, so this one, like this way would be considered a line of symmetry also. So like I always have my students like go back to the original shape and draw the, the lines of symmetry. Remember, that line needs to cut through the middle. You can't call this a line of symmetry or this a line of symmetry. You can just say you cut the object, but you can't say you cut it in half. You're essentially cutting it in half. <clears throat> now, that's not all. I want you to fold this one to this one. So kind of bring that over here. And look at that. That lined up really well, too. I don't see any overlapping. Like, I don't see things sticking out. What's, what's right over here is exactly over here. I always tell my students when you look at an object in a line of symmetry, like, I'm going to kind of, I'm going to kind of turn it like this, just so you can see what I'm talking about. Hope this will work. Okay, I'm just going to have to do this. I always tell my students that like, you know, when you look at an object and you see a line of symmetry, you need to just kind of do this. Like, okay, it's going down like this at an angle. Is it doing the exact same thing on the left side? Yes. Now I'm over here and now it's going back towards that line. Is it doing the exact same thing on the left side? Yes. That can be considered a line of symmetry. I always say just start 
and like follow the path of that object. And I'll show you some more examples as we go through this. Because this one's like a very prime example. You see this everywhere. We need to look at other crazy shaped objects. So now I'm going to fold it the other way. And notice it matches up perfectly too. So we have one, two, three, four lines of symmetry. So I hope you picked up on a pattern that this object has four sides and ironically has four lines of symmetry. Do you think that rule would apply with every four-sided object? I don't know. Let's see. Okay, so let's look at this one. This one is that typical rectangle that we talk about. It has four right angles. Okay, now remember, this is also considered a rectangle because it has four right angles. But the reason I'm calling it a rectangle is when we think of rectangle, this is the image that comes into our head. So that's why I'm calling it that. But it's, it's a quadrilateral. It's a rectangle. You know, whatever. Okay, so I took my patty paper and I traced it. Okay, and now I'm going to fold it down the middle. Remember, it has to be down the middle. Like, you can't do this. Like, this is your middle. That's where you're folding. And so when I do that, I notice they both over, overlap exactly. It's like perfect. So right down the middle this way is a line of symmetry. And if you look, you ask yourself, okay, is it going about that much to the right? Yes. It's also doing that on the left. Is it going down on the left? Yes. Is it going back to the line? Yes. Also. So then, you know, that helps you conclude that that's a line of symmetry. Now let's go the other way. So here we have another line of symmetry. It overlaps perfectly. So same thing. We're going to call this a line of symmetry. And then I always tell my students, you know, turn your notebook sideways or your paper sideways. You know, so it's going about that much. It's doing the same over here. It's going all the way down. It's doing the same here. It's going back to that line. It's doing the same here. So that is like a second way to check and make sure. Now, like on the square, we folded it ain't like at, at an angle, like, like that way. So we're gonna see if that works with this. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna try to fold it and bring it over there. And remember that fold has to cross that middle point. Like you can't just do whatever. You've gotta make sure you're, you're, you're centering it. Oh dear, this is not going to work really well. Even though I folded it correctly down the middle, like that way at an angle. Okay, see? I'm cutting it through there. But this is not meeting that. See? If it was, then you wouldn't see like that showing through. Like they would both match up. The reason why is because this is more far out here and it's shorter, or this is shorter here than it is over here. So when you fold it, you're not gonna get a match. So let's try it the other way. Let's say I tried to fold it like, like that. And see, it doesn't work. It creates a really cute bow, okay? I cut that, but it doesn't match. Now, here's the problem where people run into. People say, but Miss, but teacher, you know, I'm cutting it, whoops, I'm cutting it, and these are congruent. These are both, you know, right triangles with uh, one side being very, very long. I'm like, you have a good point. These are congruent, but they're not a reflection of each other. You have to have it like this. If they were truly a line of symmetry, it would actually have to be like that. Does that make sense? See, when you cut it and you, you're drawing like a picture, you're like, okay, it's going up at that angle. Is it doing on the left? Yes. It's going all the way back up to that line. Is it doing that? Yes. But when you do it with this, you're like, okay, it's, it's going straight that way. Is it going straight that way with that line too? Or, hold on, let me make that straight. It's kind of going down at an angle. Is it going down at an angle on the left side? No, it's not. Now it's going all the way down there. Is it doing that over there? No, it's not. So that can't, 
Those can't be considered lines of symmetry, unfortunately. So I guess this kind of makes us rethink about our theory that this has four sides, but this only has two lines of symmetry. So what I want you to understand is that just because it has seven sides doesn't mean it has seven sides, seven lines of symmetry. Just because it has four sides doesn't mean it has four lines of symmetry. The reason this has four lines of symmetry is because all four sides are the same length. When you look at this one, are all four sides the same length? No. These two are the same length. These two are the same length. So that changes things. So we're going to look at another example where all sides are the same length and see if you know our theory proves true. Okay, so let's look at this hexagon. I tried my very best to make all six sides the same length. So I really hope that this works and matches our theory that number of equal sides equals number of lines of symmetry. So here we go. I'm going to match that end to this end. Okay, please match up as best as you can. Yep, we've got a perfect match. I'm going to now match up. Well, okay, let's just do this. I'm going to just do as many as I can. I'm going to fold it down this way. That works. I'm going to fold it this way. Notice it's always crossing the middle. It's not like a random thing. Um, now I'm going to match it up on these two lines. Okay, and then let's do this. Okay, and then I have one more right here. See, every time I was folding, I hope you noticed there was no crossing over. So let me draw my lines of symmetry. So I first folded it here and here. You know, your basic, basic, average, well-known lines of symmetry. Then when I turned it, I was like, oh, let's fold it here. And then I turned it again, and I was like, oh, let's fold it here. And then I turned my paper, and I was like, let's fold it there. And then I was like, let's fold it there. So I ended up getting six lines of symmetry on there. Because this has six sides and they are all equal, we have six lines of symmetry. So, equal sides, however many equal sides there are, that's how many lines of symmetry there are. So if you have an, a triangle that's an equilateral triangle, which I know it's not in the fourth grade curriculum, but you know, see if you can print one off the computer or something, try to draw your lines of symmetry. It works on an equilateral triangle. It would be here, here, and here. Remember, it must fold in the center. If you had a pentagon, this is not going to be a very good one, but yeah, it'll work. One, two, three, four, five. So it works, you know, five equal sides equal five lines of symmetry, six equal sides equal six lines of symmetry, three equal sides, you know, so square, equilateral triangle, pentagon, hexagon, um, a, um, a septagon, which has seven equal sides, an octagon that has eight equal sides, they will all have that many lines of symmetry. Okay, let's look at this shape. This shape has five sides. One, two, three, four, five. All five sides are not the same length, so we can't assume that there's going to be five lines of symmetry. That only works with if, if it's e all equal sides. So I'm going to trace this and then check out my lines of symmetry. So I'm going to try my average basic one where you fold it right there. I know it's overlapping just a teeny tiny bit, but I didn't do a very good job chasing we're going to assume that that works, okay? And then if you try this, you know, it, it's, it's not working. It's a very different situation. Maybe trying folding this way, notice all the overlapping, and then trying this way, notice all the overlapping. 
So when you look at this, you're like, okay, it's going straight out that way. It's going straight out that way on the left. It's going down on the right. It's going down on the left. It's going back up here on the right. It's going back up here on the left. So you could say through that process that that's a good line of symmetry. Now you're going to repeat that strategy like trying this maybe. Try cutting it half like that. And then you would want to turn your board this way. And you're like, okay, it's a little bit here, but it's quite long here. It's going straight down here, and this is going at an angle. And then it's going back to the line. And then it's like, well, it's going way out here, then back to the line. So you can already tell that's not going to work as a line of symmetry. So this has two lines of symmetry. Okay, let's look at a few more and I want you to also do them too. If you have tracing paper and you want to try to draw it on tracing paper and fold it, great. If not, I want you to draw it on white computer paper and try the strategy that I showed you where you try to draw it on the left and make sure it's happening on the, or draw it on the right and make sure it's happening on the left. So I just drew a random wacky figure to the best that I could and I want you to decide how many lines of symmetry, symmetry there are. Press pause and then work at the problem and press play when you're ready to check. Okay, so looking at this, I'm going to try that average basic one, this one down the middle, and I'm going to check it. Okay, so it's going up on the right, it's going up on the left, it's going down on the right, it's going down on the left. It's making a circle on or semicircle on the right, it's making a semicircle on the left. It's going down, it's going down, it's going up it's going up. So I would call that a good line of symmetry. Now I'm going to try it this way. And for that I'm going to have to turn my book or my notebook or marker board or whatever you're doing this assignment on. Okay, so if I'm over here it's going down on the right, it's going down on the left, it's going up on the right, it's going up on the left, it's going down on the right, it's going down on the left. It's going down, it's going down, it's going up, it's going up, it's making a circle, it's making a circle. So that would be considered a good line of symmetry too. Then let's try something like sideways. Whoa, this is going to be interesting. So if that's the center, you know, okay, my marker's running out of ink. I'm going to have to use blue. So down the center, I can already tell this isn't going to work. This is going down, that's going all the way up like that. And then this is going up, and then and this is going like up that way. So if it were to match, it, it should have done that. So failed attempt, not going to work. Two lines of symmetry. We know if that way it doesn't work, it's not going to work the other way. Here are five more that I would, would like you to do. This is a trapezoid. This is another trapezoid. This is just a random flag-looking thing, an arrow, and a isosceles triangle. So press pause, see how many lines of symmetry you can you do, and press play when you're ready to check. Okay, so hopefully you tried my strategy and only this one works, because when you do it this way, these are sticking out and these are closer inward. On this one, this has zero lines of symmetry, because if you try it this way, you know, it's short here and then going down, well, it's long down here. So, you know, and then when you do the angles, the angular kinds, those don't work either. This one, you would think this is going to work. But when you do this, you're like, okay, it's going here, it's going here. But then it's waving inward towards the line. This is waving outward away from the line. So that's not going to work. And then when you try it this way, you're like, this is dipping low and going up. This is dipping high and then going down. So zero lines of symmetry for this one. This one, we know this one would work. But then when you cut it here, you know, you notice there's a triangle on this side and there's not a triangle here, so not going to work. And then, you know, you can tell when you cut it that way, it's not going to work. And just so you know, since this is an isosceles triangle, two sides are the same, which means if you cut it down this way, it will work. But if you cut it this way, it won't because this is much longer than this side. So one line of symmetry, zero, zero, one line of symmetry, one line of symmetry.